Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Nico D'Angelo. Nico D'Angelo is going to be starring, co-starring, in the upcoming novel The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Shiro. Nico has been a side character and a brief point of view character in the other Camp Half-Blood Chronicle novels. But this is the first time that we are getting a novel focused on Nico himself. And his boyfriend Will, of course. But what are the currently known powers of Nico D'Angelo? Today we'll discuss. When we meet Nico in the Titan's Curse, he is a child with slight memory loss from he and his sister's time in the Lotus Hotel and Casino. And he is enamored with the thought of being a demigod until he loses his sister Bianca. Nico is the son of Hades from the 1940s, and as a demigod has all of the usual suspect of demigod abilities, ADHD, dyslexia. Although we are never outright told by any narrator that he actually has ADHD or dyslexia. Although there are some clues, such as the hyperfixation on myth of magic. This may be something that is talked about in The Sun and the Star, or revealed, or something that we, the reader, are meant to assume. Only time will tell. <laughs> he also presumably has things that other demigods have, such as increased stamina and increased healing abilities than your average mortal. But as a child of Hades, he is a bit of an enigma, even amongst other demigods. And his powers aren't really comparable to other demigods even his half-sister Hazel, who is a daughter of Pluto versus a son of Hades. Nico has many powers that one would associate with necromancy, or control over the dead, such as being able to summon and communicate with the dead, he can release spirits into the underworld, and he can sense when a demigod or mortal dies by like a buzzing in his ear. He also has dominion over death and ghosts, earning him the moniker of the Ghost King. He's also not just able to summon ghosts, but he's able to silence them very easily. He is also able to call skeletons to his aid when needed, and can control the dark obsidian souls of the underworld. Nico is also able to turn the living into ghosts and suck them down into the underworld, although we've only seen this power once and he doesn't actually remember doing it. We hear later from Reyna and Coach Hedge what happened. Nico also has powers over the earth. He is able to open up the earth and either force things out of it, like the dead, or force things into the earth to be buried, like the living. He can also cause craters in the earth as well. And as a son of Hades, he is able to control dark energy like his father, although to a lesser extent because he's a demigod and not a god. And probably Nico's most well-known power is his ability to shadow travel. He is able to transport himself and others through the shadows to their desired location, or relatively near the desired location. He does sometimes get pulled off course and Maybe doesn't always make it exactly to where he needs to go, but he's pretty close most of the time. However, the active shadow travel does tire him out to the point of almost disappearing from existence and being sucked into the shadow. And this is one of the only times that we've seen a power of a demigod harm them in this way, to the point of not even death, to the point of non-existence. Nico is not just able to use the shadows for shadow travel, he's able to use them in other ways. He can bend them around himself to hide himself and others. Manipulate the shadows, if you will. We also see within Heroes of Olympus that Nico is able to travel through dreams, although he's not as good at it as the children of Hypnos. And we've also seen that Nico can release a dark concussive wave powerful enough that he almost knocks out Jason, who is a bystander and someone who is not being hit with this wave. 
And if you would like, we'll pretend that I inserted a joke about Jason passing out. Now, I'm sure in The Sun and the Star, we will not only see more powers, but maybe a more refinement of the powers that we've already seen from Nico. Because now we're going to be in Nico's point of view for a majority, half, who knows, of The Sun and the Star. But we'll see more from Nico's point of view than we ever have. And we will have the point of view of someone very close to Nico to see Nico's power from an outside perspective as well. And Will is probably paying a little bit closer attention than most other demigods have of Nico, at least so far. But what powers do you want to see more of in The Sun and the Star? What powers do you think Nico will show that we haven't seen before in The Sun and the Star? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos on the sun and the star and the greater Rick Riordan universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.